Public Safety Minister, pardon me, Dominic Lamont is with us live now. Hi, Minister, good to have you here. Thank you so much for making the time. Hi, good evening, Vashi. For months, Minister, I remember you and many other ministers in your government telling Canadians that an inquiry wasn't necessary because there were other measures and other mechanisms in place to fully investigate the issue of foreign interference. Am I to take from your decision today that you no longer believe that's the case? Uh, we believed in February, Vashi, when we appointed David Johnston, the former Governor General, to review all of these circumstances, to have access to all of the classified information and to make a public report uh, to Canadians. We thought that that was an important first step uh, in examining this issue in an independent way. As you noted, uh, Mr. Johnston was subject to partisan attacks. He was uh, attacked by the very party that appointed him as Canada's Governor General. Uh, and he decided to leave that function in June. The Prime Minister asked me at that point to work with all of the opposition parties on what would be the next steps. A public inquiry was never off the table for the government. Mr. Johnston identified some of the challenges of having a public inquiry in the area of uh, classified intelligence information. But the terms of reference that we worked on with the opposition, and they agreed to unanimously with us, uh, allow for the Commission to function in a way that protects Canada's security information, but also, we think, in a way that can reassure Canadians around the resiliency of our democracy. So we think this was a very important step that we all took together today. If it was so important, though, Minister, why does it look like your government was kind of dragged there kicking and screaming by all parties in the opposition? Well, I've been an opposition MP too, Vashi. I would have predicted that that's exactly what they would have said. I even joked with them uh, when I spoke to them uh, at the end of last week that, of course, at the announcement they would say that. Um, we thought what was important is to lower the very toxic partisan tone around this issue, which we saw in the spring, uh, which attacked, as we said, Mr. Johnston in a way that we thought was, uh, was unseemly. That's fine. Uh, we've now worked with the opposition party in a very collaborative, frankly, and collegial way to arrive at terms of reference for an inquiry, every line of which we agreed to all of us, and the uh, choice of uh, Justice Ogg of the Quebec Court of Appeal to lead the inquiry uh, was also a unanimous choice of all the recognized parties in the House of Commons. So we think that this should lower the partisan temperature. It should give this important issue uh, to one of Canada's senior justices uh, who will be equipped to examine all of these issues, all of the facts, have access to all of the relevant information, and make recommendations to Canada uh, and to Canadians. So uh, we think this should reassure Canadians about our democratic institutions and, frankly, about the ability of Parliament to work collaboratively on an issue that should be uh, a nonpartisan one, how to ensure that hostile foreign actors don't interfere in Canadian democratic processes. And I certainly take the point that the issue of the health of our democracy is a very important one and that it shouldn't be a partisan matter. Do you regret then, Minister, not instigating the type of collaboration you just described sooner? Well, you'll forgive us, Vashi, for having thought that uh, a very eminent Canadian legal scholar, former principal of McGill University and somebody that Stephen Harper thought was qualified to be Governor General of Canada, could have reviewed all of this information and provided independent advice to the government and transparent advice that would be shared with Canadians. The opposition chose to ensure that that process didn't function as we had hoped. Uh, so we thought that we shouldn't uh, allow Canadians to doubt the resiliency of our democratic institutions, the security of them. Frankly, the work that we think our government has done since 2015 in putting in place measures that did not exist in previous governments to counter, to detect and counter uh, examples of foreign interference. So we're confident that Justice Ugg and her commission is the appropriate next step and the fact that it is the unanimous choice of all the recognized parties in the House of Commons, we think should give Canadians a sense that this important work can be done in a thoughtful uh, and nonpartisan way. 
I, I want to just pick up on, on something you mentioned there about the, the mechanisms that your party has, or your government rather, has put in place since 2015, because I haven't ever pretended that, that, it's, not, that it's nothing, right? That, that you have done some things, including putting together the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians. But it's, it's on that committee that I actually want to ask you something about what might happen going forward in this inquiry, because the committee itself, in a July report, they're looking into this issue of foreign interference, and they specifically said they're not getting the information from government departments that they would like to have access to, that they're citing, uh, for example, several departments, several, they said, cite outside, you know, in holding back info, that it's outside statutory, the statutory exceptions. How can you assure Canadians that Justice Ogg is not going to face the same problems? So the government has uh, proactively uh, waived cabinet confidence with respect to all of the relevant, relevant documents that uh, the Commission would need to begin its work. It's what we did for the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, for the review agency, for David Johnston uh, in his review in the spring. Uh, the Commission always has the ability, Vashi, to come back and ask the government for access uh, to further documents. All of the most classified intelligence information will be made available to the Commission. The orders in council that the Governor General signed this morning creating the Commission specifically contemplate the secure and appropriate way for uh, Madam Justice Ugg and the Commission to have access to all of these documents. So uh, Canadians should be, should be confident and the terms of reference of the inquiry that, as I said, were agreed to by every party contemplate exactly that access so that she can in fact form in her independent judgment advice to the government and uh, help Canadians understand the facts around this issue. What are you doing to rectify the roadblock, roadblocks, pardon me, though, that NSACOP is facing in its own investigation into this, which you and other members of your government have frequently cited as an adequate way to look into the issue of foreign interference? Well, it's part of what is necessary to reassure Canadians. There's a national security and intelligence review agency led by another former senior jurist. So these are mechanisms, Vashi, that didn't exist before we formed a government that we think allow parliamentarians from all parties to participate uh, in this important review work. Uh, and obviously there are internal the, mechanisms but by which... Not getting the, but they're not getting the information well, that they need. That's what they said explicitly. Well, Sure, and I will obviously ask, and I have asked, the national security agencies that report to me uh, to ensure that they're following the legislation and providing the National Security Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians uh, with the documents that are necessary. But access to specific documents are governed by a series of statutes, of laws, that have existed for a long time, and it's not politicians that administer the daily management of that information, but I obviously recognize the important work that these parliamentarians do, as does the Prime Minister, and we want to make sure they have access to the documents and the information they need to do the work that's important for Canadians. Just a few seconds left, Minister, and I wanted to ask you in your, in your purview now, your new purview overseeing public safety, if you can uh, tell Canadians that there will be a bill before the end of the year that brings into effect a foreign agents registry, consultation closed in May. I remember your predecessor, Minister Mendocino, first talking about launching those consultations in December of last year. Is there a bill coming to create one? Uh, sure, there is a bill coming. The, well, the consultations, as you noted, finish in the spring. I'll be publishing very soon uh, a summary of what we've heard from the different groups that participated in these consultations. We recognize that this legislative measure is part of further strengthening a series of measures around foreign interference. It's one of a number of measures that our government will introduce legislatively over the next number of months. But we recognize that that particular item uh, is of particular interest and we hope to proceed quickly. Okay, Minister, I'll leave it there. Appreciate your time as always. Thank you. Thank you, Vashi. Have a great evening. You too. Minister Dominic Levant, who oversees both public safety and